More than 10 million people across the UK have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. Its drug regulator says the data so far is very reassuring. Suspected side effects have only been reported for around three out of every thousand shots, and most were mild. The government says both the Pfizer-BioNTech and Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccines appear to work well against the variants spreading in the UK. It's now working with the German firm CureVac to develop new vaccines to specifically combat other variants that might emerge in the future. From the 15th of February, anyone arriving in the UK from a coronavirus hotspot will have to spend 10 days in hotel quarantine. Most international travel is already banned, but authorities are trying to stop the spread of new virus variants. Under the plan, people returning from high-risk countries will have to quarantine in approved hotels and they'll be billed for their stay. Well, Tyg Enright is in London with more on the UK's hotel quarantine plans. It's more than a week now since the British government announced its hotel quarantine plan and just 10 days before it's due to come into effect. And yet, only now, the government is still booking thousands of hotel rooms at a cost of tens of millions of euro and confirming its plans that British and Irish citizens and legal residents coming back from high-risk countries with new variants will have to spend 10 nights or 11 days in isolation in selected hotels. Non-residents of those countries will still be banned. This comes at a cost of €1,100 Euro per person. For that, you'll get three meals a day, fresh fruit and snacks, water, tea and coffee, and 24-hour security to ensure you stay in your room or to escort you outside for fresh air or a cigarette. Opposition politicians have been criticising how long it's taken to get this plan up and running and that it will only apply to those countries with newly identified variants. It won't account for other places where new variants are only emerging. And hotel owners, obviously very keen for the business, have also been complaining that the government hasn't talked to them sooner and has left them in the dark until now, just 10 days to go until this plan is due to launch. Ty Genwright, Euronews in London. Well, for more on these new COVID-19 variants, let's talk now to Danny Altman. He's a professor of immunology at Imperial College in London. Well, thanks for taking time to speak to us here on the programme. Is the UK doing something differently? Why is it reporting so many variants? I'm, I'm not sure if we are doing things any differently to any other country. So, so you know, since the start of this pandemic, there have been, what, 200,000 different virus sequences reported around the world. Um, and now we're reaching a stage where, where these um, variants that have some impact on the phenotype of the disease are, are popping up here, there and everywhere. The UK is, is perhaps rather good at sequencing and genomics, um, and therefore we're picking them up. Um, I suspect they're in many countries. Well, how can this data, if at all, then help towards predicting how some viruses may mutate? Well, I, I think I think we're building up quite a, a detailed picture of the way that this virus, this virus, and other coronaviruses are behaving. Um, so, if you remember, you know, at the start of this, um, you know, folks like myself were saying that um, mutation might not be a big problem because this was a rather sluggish virus compared to something like flu, and wasn't known for for doing kind of very radical things. And of course, we were proved completely wrong simply because if you've got so many cases in the world. Um, and, you know, a few hundred thousand sequences, sooner or later mutants are going to pop up that are a bit more transmissible or a bit better at evading immunity. But I, I do think it's a, a, a finite, limited number, um, and they won't keep popping up in, in, you know, in vast numbers forever and ever, let's hope. Well, the fact that it's sort of mutating and at, at this rate, you know, what can we read into that? Because other countries now are reporting this. Is there any extra defences that countries can put up? I, th I think what it means is... Um, well, yeah, I think the main defence we've got is um, what we're doing is to get it under control and not allow it to transmit because um, the more lungs it's it's sitting in and the more people it's sitting in, the more it can mutate. Um, the more we get it under control, the less it can mutate. So the answer is to do what we're doing, is to control it, to have lockdowns and to have the biggest possible vaccination programmes that we can and, um, you know, give it nowhere to hide. <laughs> 